sir. Good morning, my dear friends. Today, as part of the introduction to Kamala Das, I am going to situate him, her, at least try to situate her uh, in and against the tradition of Indian poetry in English. Now, the case of India first as a colony and then as a post-colony, is different from that of a place like, uh, like Canada or uh, Australia, you know. India had a multilingual, multi-ethnic, very well-developed, literary and cultural tradition even before the coming of the Europeans. As a result, the encounter and the assimilation that resulted from this colonial encounter was at once conflictual and asymmetrical. You see, in the case of Indian poetry, because of its Sanskrit and other vernacular traditions, literary traditions, it was quite well developed. So when, from time to time, new waves of invaders came, and tried to run it over with its cultural invasions. It was always partially successful. We think about the Muslim influence, for example, Arabic and Farsi greatly influenced the Indian tradition and got influenced in return. Mixed languages and mixed, mixed literary cultures came into being. Hindi, Urdu, all these things, all these languages and literary traditions were mixed ones. Now, when in the 18th century, the colonial agenda of the Britishers became clear. The response that India gave to this newest wave of invaders was again very mixed one. We all know that poetry as a literary genre comes to occupy the literary space earlier than prose in any language, in any literature. And Indian poetry had a rich tradition. So when English was introduced to in, in India, if we talk about the 19th century as the watershed in this context, then obviously the 19th century Bengal, especially because Bengal was the first province that embraced European literature, European languages, European cultures, European traditions. So some of the English educated, European educated uh, Bengali elite, they tried to write poetry in English. 
a name that readily uh, a few names that readily come to our minds i'm i'm just talking about two of them one is michael madhusudan dot another okay i'm okay, cutting down on many other allusions i'm just talking about sadudar so i have taken one male and another female poet peter berry has talked about the three phases of the post colonial literary encounter the adopt phase in which a la uh, little child a new literary linguistic and cultural tradition is imbibed and imitated rather then this comes the adapt phase when having learned the nouns and voids of the uh, the, the, the nouns and stops of the a uh, new tradition the poets try to outdo the originals then comes the adapt phase when assimilation has come full circle and the new language or the new culture no longer remains new and the native poet who has been exposed to the new tradition uses it in a confident manner not only abiding by the rules and models but also innovating and inventing new ones in tandem with uh, in in consonance with the reality that he f- or she finds and the desires creative desires that he or she feels if we talk about three indian english women poets we may understand the trajectory of this if we take up tarudat sarojini naidu and kamala das we can very easily understand the adopt the adapt and the adapt phase but independence of india in 1947 not only changed the political landscape of india process to the partition if i can use this in lieu of thanks to well it led to other important cultural considerations for example revivalism was there and english along with the british rule was reviled and people wanted to at least shun it as a medium of cultural communication as a medium of literary expression so the what an cot parasitic nature of indian writing in english some of the critics and readers tried to foreground this but as is common people who wanted to write in english did write in english there was a lot of struggle you know even in the nimrana controversy the 
quarrel between the Bhasha literatures and Indian writing in English was made much of. I know that I am referring to certain things and I request my students and friends to look things up because it is not possible for anyone to explain every allusion that he or she makes in course of a presentation. See, Kamala Das is a product of the mixed literary and cultural traditions of India. In my last lecture, I had talked about, it was uh, incidentally the first lecture on Kamala Das, you know. I had talked about the poet's ability to speak in three languages, write in two and dream in one. So obviously she was exposed to the Tamil literature, to the Malayalam literature, and obviously to his English literature. At the same time, having stayed in Calcutta, Bombay, and other places, even in Sri Lanka, for example, she imbibed much of the tradition of that, those places. As a result, there was something very eclectic in Kamala Dasha's poetic credo. Now, after independence, the ossified remains of the colonial traditions. Some Indian poets, Indian writers in English, <coughs> started to get rid of. Kamala Das has oftentimes talked about Nisim Ezekiel as a kind of guru in this. Kamala Das, Nisim Ezekiel, A.K. Ramanujan, Jayanto Mahapatra, these poets started writing poetry and publishing them, if not together, at least they were contemporary. One or two years, here and there, had to be added or subtracted. They, in their own ways, you know, Nisim Ezekiel, because of his very interesting Jewish tradition, uh, A.K. Ramanujan, because of the Tamil tradition, uh, Jayanta Mahapatra because of the Oriya tradition, and Kamala Raj because of the Malayalam tradition. They were deeply rooted in the soil, or the cultural soil, of the place where from they sprang, or the racial, the ethnic origins of themselves. But they were exposed to European and American world literature, so to say. Kamala Dash was also the poetry ed editor of the Illustrated Weekly, which meant that she was exposed to the poetic voices of a rich variety and on uniform quality. At the same time, she was forced to read these poems, written by many, submitted for publication. She had to judge. And in one of her conversations with me, you know, because I have done my PhD on her poetry, she told us in a, in, a, in a very, very instinctive way, she characterized poetry. She said, when language gives you goosebumps, it is poetry. So the inspired quality of the poetic communication, the expression, is what, for Kamala Das, constituted its essence. 
Now, Kamala Das was not only alive to the literary traditions, but as I have tried to point out in my previous lecture, she was also keenly alive to the historical and political changes that she found herself in. The rapid urbanization of India, the political struggles that the Indian democracy had to withstand, the widespread discrepancy in the educational, social, and financial distribution and equity, all these things came into the poetic purview of Kamala Das. Kamala Das was indebted to the Sangam poets, the writers of the Theri Gatha, the poets, one of the Buddhist nuns. But at the same time, she was also influenced by Whitman and the confessional poets, among others. So, this blend that Kamala Das effect, effected in the traditions of East and West that led to her own experiments with language and with style in her poetry. And that is why, along with the fiercely combative event, Stance that she takes about and on certain issues like gender, class, ethnicity, age, health issues, and even ideology. Kamala Das was a shining beacon for the subsequent generations of Indian writers in English. I hope with this discussion I have tried to and I have succeeded to some extent in situating Kamala Das in and against the poetic tradition, you know. Eliot, by talking about tradition and the individual talent, not only talks about the, the dates that a writer has towards his predecessors, he also talks about the supervention of novelty. How? Through his or her individual talent. She not only adds to, but changes and disturbs the poetic tradition that she or he finds herself or himself in. Leads to her ultimate poetic credo that allows the reading public to take a more comprehensive view of his or her poetic opera. Thanks for listening.